Pop what? Pop what? What is he trying to say? Pop science. Pure science's free-spirited younger brother. flip a dip, -dip. Peer-reviewed articles are full of jargon and superfluous details. Pop science, on the other hand, is easy and helps general audiences understand out-of-reach research. Pop science! It's the reason most people know that the Earth circles around the sun or blood carries oxygen. It's because someone distilled that information in a way that was usable. But just because somebody writes a science communication article doesn't necessarily mean they know what they're talking about. They're the writers of their own press releases, Morty. They're a bunch of drama queens that spend an hour talking and 20 minutes jumping around while shit blows up. That caveat may be a much bigger problem than most people realize with fake information constantly seeping into our Facebook walls and news. Called fake news. So today we're going to explore that issue with my favorite example of inaccurate pop science. A 2015 paper published in the scientific journal Language Science titled Taboo Word Fluency and Knowledge of Slurs and General Pejoratives Deconstructing the Poverty of Vocabulary Myth. Journalists and bloggers had a field day when this paper came out. While the title is long-winded and boring, the paper covers swearing in a positive way, which bloggers and journalists loved to use as an excuse to swear in their articles. Fuck you. While the paper came out in 2015, I still see the misleading science communication spin-offs on my Facebook wall today. Well, not specifically today, but like in the general area of what time I'm recording this. Before we discuss how the blogs got the information wrong, let's see what's actually in the study. The paper. Despite how fun and cathartic swearing is, there are a lot of negative assumptions that come with it. Holy shit, dude. One of these assumptions is that people who swear a lot tend to have a poor vocabulary and struggle to find appropriate words compared to people who don't swear as much. They're ripping the shit out of the sea. Jumping off that idea, researchers J and J wanted to explore the hypothesis that maybe knowing an abundance of swear words isn't a reflection of a bad vocabulary. Maybe people who have a high taboo word fluency also just have a higher general word fluency. To see if there was a relationship between the different fluencies, researchers asked college students to come up with words within a number of different categories. Animals, words that begin with F, words that begin with A, words that begin with S, and taboo words. On average, they found that people that had a higher general word fluency also had a higher taboo word fluency. Meaning that people who knew more words just knew more words, regardless of if they were swearers or not. This trend was the same for both women and men, so both genders did equally well. In previous studies, other researchers linked propensity for swearing with personality type. So our researchers, J&J, &J, also wanted to see if personality type was linked to taboo word fluency. They had one group answer questions to see where they stood in the Big Five inventory of personality traits. These traits include agreeableness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, openness, and extroversion. That past study looking at taboo frequency, so the amount that people swear, found that people were more likely to cuss if they ranked higher in extroversion and neuroticism, but they were less likely to swear if they ranked higher in agreeableness and conscientiousness. J&J &J found similar results where people who scored higher on agreeableness and conscientiousness also scored lower on taboo word fluency, whereas people who scored higher in neuroticism scored higher on taboo word fluency. Again, that's fluency, not frequency. Fluency is when somebody is able to come up with words. Frequency is looking at how much people use the words. However, despite people who were extroverted showing higher swear frequency, it didn't seem to relate to their swear fluency. Instead, people who ranked high on openness had higher word fluency. These results suggest that while people who know more swear words tend to swear more, there are still people with a strong grasp on swear word lexicon that don't swear as much. So it's a mixed bag, essentially. Fact, fuck, 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 fuck. Boiled down, this study supports the fluency is fluency concept, meaning the more words you know, the more words you know, regardless of what category they're from. Simple enough, right? It's easy and good. Well, apparently not. And this leads us into the pop science articles. I dug deep into the internet looking for pop science articles that discussed this paper. And by digging deep down, I mean grabbing everything I could from the first five pages of Google, because past page five, what's the point? From those sites, I narrowed it down to 15 articles that discussed the J&J &J paper, which is a lot considering 2.5 million research articles are published every year, and I don't see a science communication piece for multivariate phenotypic divergence along an urbanization gradient. Say what? All right, so we found out there is definitely quantity, but is there quality in these articles? 
My next goal was to fact check every one of these science communication articles against the swearing paper. And let me tell you, it was infuriating. DISAPPOINTED! Not because they were badly written, which a couple of them definitely were, uh, but it was just appalling to see how wrong some of them got it. WRONG! Out of the 15 articles, only six reported an accurate conclusion. And out of those six, four of them reported inaccurate information about some aspect of the study. Whether it was misquoting information cited in the original paper, or incorrectly interpreting branching results. Like which personality types were more likely to have higher taboo word fluency. So going back to the nine that reported false conclusions. Every one of them claimed either that swearing makes you smarter, or people who swear are smarter than people who don't swear. Which is 100% inaccurate, recalling that the paper only suggested that people who can recite more words in general could also recite more swear words. A couple of articles went as far as saying that swearing gives you a higher IQ. Nowhere in the original study did they mention anything about IQ. They did not touch how smart people were, and they did not measure intelligence metrics. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. They didn't even use the word intelligence. Some of my favorite just totally wrong titles of these articles included Are you a swearing night owl? You might be a genius. Or not. Do you swear a lot? Good news. You're more intelligent than your polite friends. Who is talking about being polite? No one related swearing and being polite. Politeness is heavily context dependent. God damn! Thanks, noob noob. This guy gets it. Research proves that having a dirty mouth has its benefits. The research you're quoting doesn't say that. It doesn't say that swearing causes anything. Science proves swearing makes you smart. Who, who is science and why are they saying that? I noticed a couple of trends within multiple articles that demonstrated a complete lack of understanding of how science and research is conducted. So let's go through what those trends are. 1. The writers love to say that the research proved a conclusion when it didn't. No individual study can prove anything. A result can support an idea, but all studies have their shortcomings. This study looking at taboo word fluency in college students says nothing about other distinct groups of people. Number two, they didn't seem to understand the difference between causation and correlation when making statements like swearing makes you smarter or swearing gives you a higher vocabulary. Causation is when one variable directly influences another variable. I'm joking! <laughs> correlation looks at the relationship between variables, but it doesn't mean that one variable directly affects another. <gasps> oh my gosh, you like turtles? I like turtles too! What is happening here? For example, ice cream sales and the number of people who drown are positively correlated. Which means that as ice cream sales go up, so do the number of drownings. And as ice cream sales go down, so do the number of drownings. This trend is not because ice cream causes drownings. This is because people are more likely to buy ice cream and swim in the summer as opposed to the winter, so the data fluctuates in tandem. Summer's employment at the Daily Freeze during her sophomore year coincided with an inexplicable 212% increase in revenue. Just like swearing doesn't boost the number of words you know, it's just that the number of taboo words you know and the number of just general words you know are related. And three, the conclusions people made in their pop science articles extrapolated way beyond the bounds of what the original paper could say. One notable example comes from a website ironically titled iHeartIntelligence.com. They wrote, This study was conducted with a small amount of people, but I believe the findings would be the same on a greater scale. Granted, they noted that's not what the original study said. But by adding unsubstantiated information into an informative piece, it colors the information and makes it seem like the author's opinion is fact. In Virginia, anyone who passes the bar can be a lawyer. You haven't passed the bar and this isn't Virginia! They don't know that. Moving on to tone, there was two distinct voices present among a lot of these inaccurate articles. The first tone attempted to be professional, adding in as much detail as possible until the final, punchy, incorrect line. The second tone was more passive-aggressive and indignant. Almost like someone told the writer of the piece to stop swearing as much recently, so they were using their article to just throw them the middle finger. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how this machine worked. Right now, I want to touch on one of the more spastic and emotionally driven articles because A, it's wildly problematic, and B, because it's from a brand name source people are likely to read. Conveniently, it comes with a verbatim video that captures Oh, so perfectly, the obnoxious tone. Do you usually think you're the smartest mother in the room? You may be right, based on a recent study. Researchers found that people who curse a lot are more intelligent. 
Right off the bat, we know this is false. Again, the paper did not touch on intelligence or frequency of cursing, or the amount that a person curses. 13-year-old boys swear all the time, and I'm pretty sure most of them are not qualified to be anything outside of a 13-year-old boy. Ay, caramba! And I'm happy to note that men and women in this experiment swore in equal measure, so let's hear it for the ladies! Again, J&J &J did not look at how much people swore, they didn't mention it, stop saying they did. I definitely feel dumber now that I'm the mother of a two-year-old and a four-year-old. I thought it was sleep deprivation, but now I understand it's because those adorable little <laughs> have been sabotaging my IQ. I'm squandering invaluable gray matter by censoring myself. Every time I say sugar and fudge, little neurons in my brain probably die. Okay, so this is just a, com a completely different bag of garbage. First off, if you feel stupid, that's your own problem. Not cursing in front of your kids does not make you dumber. And the paper didn't say that swearing increased your brain size. Second, no one said anything about IQ. Why do people keep thinking that IQ has anything to do with this? Yes, I get it. It's short for intelligence quotient. But even then, it's not related. I'm a very stable genius. A stable genius. The rest of the article continues to espouse wrong statements, backing them up with unfunny and stupid anecdotal stories. The weirdest part is that it kind of felt like they were making fun of the original paper. Perhaps I should not be annoyed at my mother-in-law when she uses the F word in front of our children. Now I see that grandma, a PhD, is merely trying to enrich their lexicon so they can go to fine schools. Shut up, shut up, shut hey. up! Like, are you being a jerk about research that you chose to cover? Oh, and by the way, for the writer, just in case you're watching, I I'm not sure if you got this based on your writing and what you were saying, uh, but writing million times in a row won't make you smarter and it won't make you know more words. So just keep that in mind for later. <laughs> Jumping to a new thing. What's the point? At this juncture, you might be thinking, but Ariana, why does it matter that journalists misrepresented an article I've never heard of about a nothing topic? Okay, I see your point. On the surface, swearing isn't necessarily a practical topic to be discussing. But what if the topic was global warming or vaccines or the validity of crystal healing? Then what? Oh, and side note, uh, I'm sorry to offend anyone, but crystal healing doesn't work. Just be aware. Agreed? Agreed. Science communication in pop science is a way that many people make educated decisions for themselves and their families. So if you're sharing misinformation because either you don't understand the source material or you're trying to push an agenda, you could hurt people. Like when Donald Trump said ingesting household cleaners could ward off COVID-19 and people started doing it. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? A lot of good things have come out about the hydroxy. A lot of good things have come out. And you'd be surprised at how many people are taking it, especially the frontline workers, before you catch it. The frontline workers, many, many are taking it. I happen to be taking it. I happen to be taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. I'm taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. And by the way, what he did was a form of science communication. A very bad form of science communication, but his form of science communication. People rely on pop science because there are these thick barriers that exist between scientific research and the general public. The main barrier being that it's hard to access original studies. Most scientific journal subscriptions are expensive, and it's pricey to download individual papers. The only reason I could access the swearing paper is because I had a university login to the journal. If I didn't have that login, it would have cost me about $36 to buy it. And if I wouldn't invest in research papers, I don't think that anybody only moderately interested in science would either. Why the fuck not? Especially since they're so hard to read. And that's partially why a lot of scientific communication is inaccurate and bad. Scientific papers are dense and difficult. Every word or arrangement of words means something very specific. Here's an example. For my master's thesis, I compared plant reproduction between urban and rural populations. In one of my drafts, I used the word city as opposed to urban a couple times because I thought it added more color and I had already used the word urban a lot of times. However, city didn't capture what the word urban did, so my supervisor made me go back and change all the times I used the word city. That might not seem like a big deal, but the point of a scientific paper is to accurately communicate complex topics. And because they're so specific, scientific papers are hard to interpret if you don't understand that aspect of them or you don't have the proper training. But the thing is, too many people who communicate science for a living don't know how to read it or interpret it. My husband is a graduate of two Ivy League universities with a degree in classics. You're so naive. 
And if they don't understand it, they can't accurately explain it to their readers. So either the writers don't know what they're talking about or they're trying to make the results more catchy than they actually are. Many original research papers focus on the minutia of a topic, but minutia isn't fun or exciting. So a lot of science communicators will often exaggerate the results or make claims that are only tangentially related to the studies. Because the sad truth is that people aren't going to click on something if it isn't sensational. Wiggity wiggity, what's up dude bros? I'm Dippy Fresh. I like skateboarding, supporting my sister, and punctuating every sentence with a high five. And that's where we get statements like, the cholesterol you get from eating one egg is as bad for you as smoking five cigarettes. That statement has been spread around radical vegan communities and was toted in the popular documentary What the Health. The claim is inherently eye-catching, but it's not true. That assertion was made based on a paper looking at heart plaque in people with pre-existing cardiovascular conditions. This study found a similar trend in cholesterol levels when looking at the number of eggs a participant had eaten on average and the number of cigarettes a participant had smoked on average. But finding a similar trend does not mean that smoking and eggs are equally bad for you. Additionally, this study did not look at eggs in general, it only looked at yolk consumption. The results of this study can't even be extrapolated to healthy people with no pre-existing cardiovascular problems because they didn't test that group of people. Yet this study was blown way out of proportion and became the poster child for why you shouldn't eat eggs. Anyway, going back to the heading of this section, what's the point? Why did I just spend the last I don't know how many minutes ranting about swearing and science and eggs and whatever else I talked about? Just, uh, just a few more minutes. But... Well, we're in a weird time right now. Not just with the COVID pandemic, but with the rise of people being able to say whatever they want with no filter and no ramifications. As individuals, we need to be aware that these practices are going on, even in places we trust. Now more than ever, we need to question what we hear and what we read and make decisions based on care and logic. Because while pop science might seem fun and flashy, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but science is more complicated than that. And that was my long talking head on a subject that I'm really passionate about, but nobody asked me to cover. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up, and if you want to support my channel, you can subscribe and or donate to my Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.